Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayami, which is Masachas Soita Daf Beis. Says the Mishnah, Hamekane Le'ishtoi. If one warns his wife against interacting with another man, so this Masechta will focus on the Parsha of Soita, which involves three stages. There's the Kinui stage, Stira, and then the Hashka of the Mei Soita. So firstly, husband has to activate Kinoi. He has to warn his wife, don't interact with that man. So of course this is based on some suspicion of illicit uh, behavior. He warns her, listen, don't interact with that man. Kinoi. Then, if she defies his uh, citation, so to speak, she goes lisaser. She goes into uh, a concealed place with that man, that is Stira, at this point, she becomes usher to her husband. If she was eating truma, no more truma. If the husband would pass away at that point, no yibum is done by his, by his brother. So even if there are no kids, no yibum, only chalitza. The only way for her to be mutter to her husband again is by taking it to the third stage, which is to be mashke her, to give her to drink, these soita waters prepared in the Beis Hamidosh, as we're going to see in this Masechta in great detail. So we're de- dealing with three levels, three stages. Kinoi, then comes Stira, then comes the Hashka. Now, how formal, how official is Kinoi, is Stira? How is this accomplished? Says the Mishnah, Makani li When one warns his wife, it can't just be in private. It has to be done in a formal manner, in front of two Edim. We have to have two Edim witnessing that warning, and now it's really official and formal, and she defies. And goes with Caesar, that man, she uh, becomes Asr. So the fact that there are two Edim makes it more real, more serious, more official, and that's what's required. However, when it comes to Stage two, stira, going into concealment with that man, which prompts the third level, the ashka. That stira can happen even al piyed echot, even if there's only one aid who witnessed her going l'seiser with that man. Or al even the husband himself can bring about that stage. If he notices her going l'seiser, she's now usher to her husband. And the only way, only way out is to be mashka her, to give her to drink. So kinoi, two aid him. Stira, even one aid, or even the husband himself. Rabbi Shua Imer, you need two aid him throughout. Mekana la the kinoi must take place in front of two aid him, and the same with stira, u mashka. And the only way he gets to giving her the waters, meaning stira, which brings to mashka, is also only al pi shnaim, in front of two aid him, and of course, these opinions are based on drashas, as we're going to see in the Gemara, based on Pesuk. Keitzad Mekanela, how does he give her that citation, that warning? He warns her in front of two Edom, as follows. Al Tedabri Imish Plani. Don't converse with that fellow. The Gemara later will discuss whether he said converse, or he actually told her not to go into hiding with that man. Now, what did she do? She went and she spoke to that person. Does she become Asr? No. That's not called Seser. That's not being Messiahed with that man. Adain Himateris Labesa. She can still come back home and live with her husband as married. Umateris Truma. She can continue eating Truma. Suppose her husband was a, a Kayan. Continue eating Truma. Or she was the daughter of a Kayan and. Um, you know, eventually if she gets divorced from him and you know, she goes back home. Truma is totally mutter for her at this point. This wasn't really a proper Hester. She just talked to the person. That doesn't make her usher. However, she defied his warning and she went and spent time with that fellow in a private place. 
she lingered the the Isman, the Ishir, which allows for interaction as married. Now this really sets the stage for real it's a real concern. There is firm basis. The Gemara will call it Raglaim Ladover. It's really a firm reason to believe that there's an Isser, that there's something wrong here, that there was Tumma, that there was Nus. Asur Labesa. At this point, she cannot go back home. Vasur Lechel Betruma, no Truma. Until she completes the process, she goes up to Besa Migdash and she proves her innocence hopefully, by drinking the Saita waters. And likewise, Vimeis, if the husband would pass away before they got a chance to proceed, Choletzes, Vlemis Yabemes, passed away with no children, typically the brother would take over by doing Yibum, in this case, they only do Chalitza. Rashi brings, based on the Gemara later, we have the word Vinitma mentioned three times, to tell us that even though we don't have a firm evidence of any Avera, but once we get to the point of Kine and Stira, she becomes Asur, Asur to the husband, Asur in Truma, and even if husband would divorce her, she cannot go and marry that other alleged perpetrator. Asks the Gemara. Mihti, let's take a look at the, look at the order of the, of the Mesechtes. Tana minazir Salek. Right? The Tana just concluded Mesechas Nazir. What's the connection? How does that take us to Saita? My Tana Dika Tana Saita. What did he teach us in, uh, you know, what, what was learned in Nazir that connects to, uh, that brings us to learn Saita now? The answer is there is a connection. Kid Rebbe, as Rebbe tells us, Sani Rebbe Oimar. In the Parsha of Nasai, we also find them positioned next to each other. And that brings us to the question, Lama. Why do we find Nazar next to Saita in the Chumash? Learn to teach us a lesson. If one witnesses the downfall, degradation, embarrassment of a Saita, he should take heed and lesson. Hashem is sending him a personal message. Look, Yazar Atzmer Minayan, he should refrain from drinking wine, which leads to frivolity. And stumbling. So that's a message directed to him from Hashem. Look, you witnessed this unfortunate scene. Apparently, it's something for you to learn from it. Take that extra measure of care to prevent impropriety. Asks the Gemara, okay, but in that case, it should be first Saita, and then <laughs> Nazir. Right? First you see the Saita, then you become a Nazir. V'lisni Saita V'hadar Listening Nazar. Let, let us learn first Saita and then Nazar, like, like in the Parsha, like in the Psukim. Answer I did the Tanuk Subas. Since we first learned Mesech Subas, which is an integral, integral part of the uh, Seder Nashim, and towards the end of Mesech Subas, we have a, a pair called Hamadr discussing the Durham and vows and restrictions imposed on the, uh, the marriage. So it's a marriage related discussion that leads us to further analyze. Tana Nadarim, we discuss all the aspects of Nadarim in a Masechta of its own. So Nadarim comes after Ksubais. If I did Tana Nadarim, once we discuss Nadarim, what's an offshoot of Nadarim? Tana Nazar. We go on to Nazar, the Dhamma Nadarim, which is a type of Nadar. And then we go to Saita because we explain the connection between Nazar and Saita. Mishnah begins with the word Hamekane, which sounds like it's not recommended. The Eved in, it's okay, it's done, he did it. But preferably don't resort to these official, formal, uh, you know, procedures to put your wife, you know, keep her uh, on track, keep her in place. It's not the way to do it. Use more, you know, personal, personal, personable and softer means of working it out. Because Tana did done, in fact, our Tana holds, Asher Lekanais, Kino is not something which you are really supposed to do. Amar of Shmo bar Yitzchak, Kav Apa Sach Rish Lakish Besoita. One Rish Lakish would begin to teach the Parsha and the Chumash Parsha Soita. Amar Achi, he would begin with the following introduction: A Mezav Gunoy La Adam Isha, Elo Lefi Maasaf. 
in Shemaim, Hashem will only pair up a woman to a man who fits the bill, who's a proper match in terms of his deeds. Rashi says, an Isha who is Tznua, who has Tznius, she's uh, granted to a Tzadik. Uprutza, an Isha who acts inappropriately, La Russia, a Russia gets her. So everything's properly matched up. Shanaimar, as the Pasuk says, the staff of a wicked person will not uh, land on the lot of a, of a righteous man. Basically, you get what you deserve. In fact, it's so difficult to match things up perfectly. The caution, Lizavgan, to make a, a match between an Isha and an Isha and perfectly match them up is as difficult as supernatural to create as as the splitting of the Red Sea. Shnemar Aliki Moishi Bihidim Bois Hashem pairs together individuals, man and a woman, to create an entry of a bias. And it's as difficult and equated to Kriyas Yamsav. Moitzi Asirim Kesharis, like extracting the uh, captives, Klali Strol Kesharis, in the of springtime, which was the most balanced, uh, you know, weather wise, most balanced time of the year. A supernatural occurrence, so too a Shidduch between an Isha and an Isha. Really? It's so difficult? It's all been prescribed and predetermined from before one's birth, even. Any of Amar Vida Marav, Harboim Yaim Koyde Mitzir Salat Way back, 40 days before the boy, the, the fetus of the Zachar is even formed. Taisa says, we're speaking about the Zachar specifically. 40 days before his formation, it's already all been allotted and worked out. All his tools, everything he needs to. Uh, succeed in this world to complete his mission, to complete his tafkit has already been prescribed and tailor-made for him. Bas kol yoytes vayimeres is a heavenly voice calling out. Bas ploini le ploini. That fellow's daughter is going to be matched up with this person. Bias ploini le ploini. This and this home will belong to him. Sada ploini le ploini. This and this field and parnasa sustenance will be his lot. Everything's tailor-made and allotted Pre-creation. So why are we saying that it's uh, it's so difficult and it's all about your schus and your madrega, tzaddik, etc. Uh, this was already decided before. A person could even express himself and prove, uh, you know, his his level and his status, and before you even know whether he's a tzaddik or a rasha. Now, although Hashem, of course, knew in advance. Rashi points this out. Hakol Goli Lefanov. Hashem certainly knows in advance who's going to be a tzaddik and who not. But Hashem does not act upon that information. In fact, Rashi brings a Gemara. Everything is Bidei Shemaim except for mitzvahs, except for spiritual accomplishments. Chutz Meira Shemaim. So that's not part of the equation. Apparently, one's zivuk is unrelated to his mass. And you tell me otherwise. You tell me it's all about the person's masam? Like, gosh, the answer is like this. Ha, Baziva Grishan. One's first wife is about mazel. It's about his inherent nature. Nothing to do with his masam, with his actions. Ha, Baziva Kshenim. But if it's the second time around, second marriage, then it's like anything else. A person is zeicha. Person's deserving, then he gets what he deserves. It's all about his level. Okay, back to Sait. So, how many Adam do we need? Both Rebelezer and Rabbi Shu agree Kinoi needs two Adam. When it comes to Stira, we have a Shaila. Rabbi Shu says two Adam as well. Rebelezer says one Adam is enough. Ad Kanoi Pligi. The whole discussion, the uh, the need for two Edim, only pertains to these two uh, these two events. Kine v'stira, Avu betuma. Well, let's take it a step further. Suppose there was kinei, there was stira, and there was, in fact, also testimony as to uh, actual. Improper behavior, interaction as married. 
Even if there's only one aide who testifies on that, he's believed, and now she's usher without any chance of recourse. There's no way to fix this up. We don't give her uh, the Ashkov, the Saita. She's usher permanently to her husband. So Tosis explains that the Gemara is being medayik from the Mishnah. This whole discussion, this whole give and take is about kinoy and stira, but tuma, which is the next level, the next step. We already have firm bases of concern. There's kinoy, there's stira, something terrible going on. And now we have one aide who's testifying about tuma. That's confirmation. In which case she's also. But Tananami, and likewise you have a Mishnah, which clearly tells us that. If an aide comes along, we're speaking after the kinyan of so we have a raglayim ladavar, we have firm basis of concern, and the aide comes and confirms our concerns. Ani reizah shenitmis, he confirms our worst fears. I, I witnessed the interaction as married. Lawyer says shoysa, there's no need. She would not go to the base of midas to drink. She's totally usher. So knowing this, that an aide is nemal by tuma. We're going to try to figure out how. What, what is the source for this chiddush? Can we find a pasuk that provides a source for this halacha? The Tanur The answer is in the following price. The pasuk by Saita says, There was no aid involved. There was no witness. And she was not forced to interact with him as married. Which tells us that she's really usher now. So the pasuk here is discussing uh, a scenario where we know for a fact that she was involved with this fellow as married, and she's totally at fault. She's guilty. There was no forced forcing involved. Loy netfas the aid einba. So we have no aid. What does that mean? Bishnai makasim adam. The word aid. Is telling us, look, we have no pair of Adam. We have no Adus. No two Adam came along to tell us that she was inter- she interacted as married, that she became Tommy. We don't have two, but we have one. We learned it faster that she was not forced to do it, and therefore she's Asr. We learn from this Pasik in terms of Tum'a testimony, even one aid is never to make her Asr. There are no two Adam. But there is one. And that's sufficient to make her us. How do we know to um, learn this, the Pasuk in this, in this manner? Maybe the Pasuk is telling us, well, Eid ain't but there isn't even one Eid. Eid is singular. Why would you say Eid means two Adam? There's no two, there's one. The answer is, the term aid refers to a pair of aid, the, the, uh, the uh, institution, so to speak, of aidus. Aid means a crew, a team, a pair of aid. How do we know that? Talmud Lamer, look at this passage. Lo yakum aid echad bish. Third does not allow an aid echad to confront a person and to... Uh, Prove his guilt, right? Eid echad. Now, if the pasuk only says lo yakam eid lo shin yachad lo yakam eid bish, any adeshu echad, wouldn't I already know from there that we're speaking about one person? One person is not trusted in bezin when he testifies against somebody else. Matam alim echad. So why does the pasuk have to repeat itself? Lo yakam eid, which already means one, eid echad, one one. By doing so, the Pasuk is setting a precedent, teaching us the true meaning of the word aid. Wherever the word aid is found in the Torah, even though it sounds like it's just one person, actually, aid is two people. Until the Pasuk actually stipulates it's aid echad, and you know it's one. Again, the fact that it has to say, Lo yakum eid echad, eid is singular, and echad is one. 
Why that repetition? To indicate that the word Eid without the word Echad next to it is Loshan Eidus, says Rashi. And Stam Eidus is two. We know that from Xerah uh, Shava, Dover, Dover. We'll see you later. So back to our uh, discussion. Pasuk says, Ve'eid ein ba. Ve'ilayin atfas. Ve'amorachmar trei les ba. What does ve'eid mean? Two. There are no two Eidim to testify on Tumor. Elochad, only one. Ve'ilayin atfas. And since she was not forced to do it, Asra. <laughs> this is the Makar. When it comes to Tumor, which follows, you know, the key of Astir, which presents real reason of concern. So we have that, you know, basis for concern. So on top of that, we have the Eid Echad. He serves as a confirmer of events, and she is Asr. Asr permanently. She can't even prove her innocence with the Mei Saita. She's Asr. Okay, so that's the conclusion. Now we're going to challenge the, the Drasha and, uh, and, and clarify it. But Ultimately, that's going to be the conclusion. Yes, when it comes to Kinoi, we have a Shaila. When it comes to Stira, we have a Shaila. How many Aiden we need? But when it comes to Tuma, all agree one Aid is enough. Asks the Gemara. The only way we came to this conclusion was based on that other Pasuk, which taught us that the word Aid is actually referring to two Aiden. Apparently, without that additional proof, without that additional pasta to prove the translation. I would, I would suggest that aid the Saita Khadu. That when the pasta says Aid Ain Bavilon it means one. There isn't one aid to testify against her. Why would you be usher then? How could you even without that other pasak, how could you learn this pasak to mean one aid. There isn't one aid. Right? The way we're learning is that aid means two. There are no two, there are only one. So one makes her us. And one is enough for Isr. Otherwise, if not for that Pasik of Aid Echabish to tell you that aid means two, how could you learn the Pasik by Saita differently? What do you mean? The aid ain ba vila nitfasa means there isn't even one aid, so we have absolutely no basis for concern. Why sh- why would she be us? Right? Well, if there's no aid testifying against her, my mitzvah, so why would she be asked to begin with? Why would you even be concerned here? Why would she be asked? Answers the Gemara. Istrach. Yeah, I do need that other Pasuk. Because without it, just this Pasuk alone would not lead us in the right direction. Sagda dachamina. Because perhaps I can learn this pasuk a bit differently. What the pasuk is saying is like this: Eid ein ba. Eid ein ba means ein neman ba. One aid is not to be trusted, not to be believed, with relation to an isha uh, asaita. Just the opposite. Don't trust one aid who testifies about tuma. That's how I would I would learn. If not for the whole arrangement of the psukim, which leads us to uh, the proper understanding that eight means two, and the pasuk is saying there are no two, but even though there isn't two, but there is one, and one is a neman. I would say no, eight means one. Eight ain't but means a neman, just the opposite. One eight is not neman. Asks the Gemara, ain't neman, how can you say he's not believed? Well, my boy, so what then do we need? One is not enough, so you need two, right? Adika tre, you need two. Vishta kramine. For that, that's a basic halacha. We don't need the pasuk here for that. We already know that typically two edim are needed to change things. The asya davar davar mimomen. We have that zero shava. Because by avera it says ki matzah ba ervas davar, and by monetary litigation it says apishnaim edim yakum davar. We learn zero shava. To accomplish with edim, we need two. Banya Yadana, I would conclude on my own. This is no different than all other uh, testimonies. Me did I have a call ideas, Shibata, like any other Aidas. Needs two? Here we need two as well. We don't need a special Pasak here. So your shot in this Pasak wouldn't work. 
So the only possible pshat is that that aid means one aid. Okay, so what's the Pasik saying? That there is no one aid, so why is she usher? So you must learn that aid means two. There are no two, there's one. So one is enough to make to make her usher. So why do you need that other Pasik? This Pasik on its own would present you with a proper Pshat. There's no other alternative to the Pshat in the Pasik. Answers the Gemara, no. Perhaps without any other you know, psukim. I would just say eid means one, literally one. One, ein eid bo, eid ein bo means you should know one eid is not to be trusted. Well, you asked me what's the chiddush? Of course, we, we need to aid him like anywhere else. Israch, I, I do need it because I would think sangat I mean, I would think soita shani an isha was already at this advanced stage. There was warning. There was hiding. She's different. You're not uh, creating something anew. It's based on real concerns and real, uh, real suspicion. The raglaim the There is a basis for this concern. Sharikinilo vinister. Look, he already warned her, and she went to hiding. So perhaps here it's different than everywhere else in the Torah that needs to aid him. Here we don't need to aid him. This haman bo Maybe even one aid is to be trusted if he says he saw the tumor. So that's what I would say. And therefore, the pastor has to say, Ve'ed ain't ba, which can mean, no, aid is not neman ba. One is not to be believed. So that's how I would learn the pasuk. But now that we have the other pasuk, that changes the whole meaning. Aid no longer means one, it means a pair of aidim. And now, when the pasuk says, Ve'ed ain't ba, we have no two, but we have one. And she is usher based on the testimony of one aid. So we sort of went around the circles, but we came back to the starting point, which is Eid Echad of Tumor is Nehmar by Saita. Asks the Gemara, Umi Matas Amris, De'ein Ne'emba, Nehmar Ba Vesharia. How could you? Again, how could you even suggest that the Pasuk would have meant something differently? Eid Einba would have meant there isn't one Eid. Ein Nehmar Ba. One is not to be believed. So even if you have an aid, he's not to be believed. Don't think, you know, the soita is worse or a glime of No, aid ain't bo. Means ain ne'emad bo. How could you even suggest that pshat? The ain ne'emad bo v'shariat, she's mutter. The pasuk is speaking about her isser. This very pasuk is discussing her isser. Vom edichsir v'hila netfasa m'chal d'asura. Aid ain't bo v'hila netfasa. She wasn't caught. She wasn't forced to, to do this ma'asa. So the Pasuk is describing her guilt. So the Pasuk can't be absolving her at the same time. Ain and Hembo, he's not believed, and then she's Asher. Israch, no, I would still learn it differently. I could still learn it this way. That aid Ainba means an aid is not Neman. Sakatamina, perhaps I would learn it like this. A Neman Bo. One aid is not believed by Tum. Adi could trade until you have two. And even when you have two, the only reason why she's Asr is because she was Loinet Fasa. Who betrayed Nami, he did Loinet Fasa. And the only reason why, uh, if two Adam come and talk about her Tumma, she becomes Asas because Lainat Fasa wasn't forced, but otherwise she would be Mutter. So bottom line is, we do have a way to learn the Pasuk. Even if uh, aid means one aid, the Pasuk can still work. And the Pasuk is describing two halachas. First, aid einba, which means one aid, no ne'emanas. Then, we learn at Fasa. If there are two aidim, that she was involved with Tumah, but it was Lainat Fasa, and that's why she's Asr. Right? But if she was not Fasa, then she's Mutter. So we're speaking about different situations, different halachas, all included in this Pasuk. That's how I would learn. If not, for the fact that we have another Pasuk, 
Loyokum Eid Echad Beish, which tells us that the word Eid is a reference to a pure of Eid. Because if it's one Eid, then why does it have to say Eid and then Echad, right? Eid means two. So back to Saito when it says Eid Ein Ba. We have no two Eidim speaking about her tumor, but one we do, and that creates Isser Vila and Etfasa because she wasn't doing it in a forced manner. She was doing it willingly. Kamash Mulan, that's the Chiddush. So ultimately, we learn from here that even one aid by Tuma is enough. Okay, so the Machleik is in Lezen Rishua focused on Tkine Vestira, not on Tuma. Rabbi Yeshua says, you need two aid them throughout. Rabbi Lezer says, Kine needs two aid them, but Stira, for that, even one person is enough. And it's based on the Pesukah. My time with Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua, my time with Rabbi Yeshua, my time with Rabbi Yeshua. Why is it so? That according to Rabbi Yeshua, you need two Aiden for Kinoi and two Aiden for Stira. Says the Gemara. Oh, Makro, because the Pasuk that we just finished says like this The Aid ain't Ba, which, t- which taught us that when it comes to Tuma, one Aid is enough. The word Ba excludes. Is it my might? Ba, only when it comes to Tuma, one Aid is enough. But let Kinoi. Not for Kine. You need two Edom. But only by Tuma, one is enough. But by Stira. By Stira, two Edom are required. Rebbe Lezer Lezer responds, Yeah, but one Edom is enough by Tuma. But by Kine, by Kine, you need two Edom. But by Stira, one is enough. Asks the Gemara, Ve'ema, but, but by Stira. Why don't we say, uh, Tuma, one Edom is enough. But Stira, you need two. Answer, Stira is Kishle Tuma. Stira is connected and related to Tuma. And just like by Tuma, one aid is enough, as we just concluded. Stira as well. Tuchsiv, where's the connection? Vinistra, Vinitma, Stira and Tuma go together. Well, Kinu Nami is Kishla Tuma. Kinu is also connected to Tuma. Tuchsiv, Vikinu is Ishtoi, Vinitma. Answer is, Hamit Rachmana Ba. We have a Miat, we can't include everything. And we exclude Kinu, there are two aid that are required. Umar Royce, what brought you to this conclusion? Why do you prefer. Excluding Kinoi and including Stira. Mustafa Stira Adifa says the Gemara, it's probable that Stira is more preferred, it's uh, more comparable to Tuma. And therefore, one aid is enough. Why? Shekin Israsa could Tuma. Just like Tuma makes her Asr for forever. In a way, Stira does the same thing. It makes her Asr until she verifies her status. So it's probable that they go on the same track. Adra, just the opposite. Kinoi Adif. If anything, Kinoi. Stands higher. Shekane Ikar, Garmla, because that is the instigator of the high, of the whole process. So perhaps, just like by Tuma, we say the Isra Tuma comes about through one aid. Uh, likewise, the, uh, the Kino, which is the instigator of the whole Isra going forward, can be accomplished by one aid. Says the Gemara, well, he loves Stira, because if not for Stira, Kinu mi Ika, what value does Kinu have? So ultimately it's the Stira that really, uh, you know, gets it going, and uh, that's the more crucial part of the process. We love Kinu, asks the Gemara just the opposite, if not for the Kinu, which is stage one, Stira, Mayahani, how do you get to stage two? Afilach, Stira, Adifa, says the Gemara still, Stira is uh, more profound and more critical and more... Uh, comparable to Tuma, the Aschalta de Tumai, because it's part and parcel of the Tuma experience which took place during the steer. Aschalta de Tumai. And it makes sense now that if Tuma can be done through one Eid Echad, likewise the Easter of Stira. So our Mishnah's version of Rebeleza was Kinoi needs two Eidim, by Stira you don't need two Eidim. Must listen like the Atana. Our Mishnah's version of Rebeleza is totally the opposite. Of Rabbi Yisrael Yehuda's version of Rabbi Lezer, the son. Rabbi Yisrael Yehuda, I'm Rabbi Lezer. Just the opposite. How mekani li'ishtay? How does one accomplish kinoi? Mekani api edecha, api atzmai, in front of an aid, or just personally himself. When it comes to stira, there, you need something more formal. Umashkela, how do you get to be mashka? How many aidin do you need by the stira? Api shnai, you need two aidin. Heshiba hacham l'divrei, Rabbi Yisrael Chacham responded to Rabbi Yisrael's version of Rabbi Lezer. 
It's impossible. Ain't love ever sight. There's no end in sight. Meaning, now actually we'll explain it soon. You're making things impractical. You're making the kinu so easy. So easy. It's just uh, creating issues. We'll see. We'll see soon in the Gemara why. Okay. So bottom line is, we have this new shita, which learns that a counter blesser. Kine can be done just personally. Still, it needs to be something more formal in the presence of aid. My time with the Rebbe Sabri, what's the reason here? Amar Kro, the Pasuk says, well, one aid is enough for Tumah, but Baba Leib is By Stir, you need to aid him. Ve'ema, maybe apply the Mio to Kinoi. Ve'ema, 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 Kinoi. Answer is, Kinoi is Kishle Tumah. We find the connection between Kinoi and Tumah. And therefore, one aid is enough in both cases. Tachsev, Ve'kinoi, Ishtay, Ve'ne Tumah. Well, Stir, Nami is Kishle Tumah. We find the same connection between Stir and Tumah. The answer is Ahu. That connection pertains to something else. To tell you, the sheer, Lakama Shir Stira. At uh, at what point in the Stira does she become tummy? How long is she in hiding with this fellow? Kade Tumahu. It corresponds to the amount of time needed to interact as married. Hudasa, that's what the Pasuk is coming for. Vinistra and Tumah go together. To tell you, it's the same shiur. Okay. Hey shibu chacham ledivir Rabbi Yisro Yehuda. So now the chacham respond to Rabbi Yisro with the words "ain the davar seif." Well, what do they mean? My new. What, what was their concern? That perhaps he's gonna pretend. He'll make up a story. The zim and the leikani. It can happen that he really did not do kina, right? He didn't really warn her, and he made up a story. Va'amar kanoi. And he sees her, you know, going to a sacer with somebody, which could happen if she wasn't really forewarned and she's not vigilant, vigilant to, uh, you know, prepare and be careful. So he'll notice her going to the sacer. He'll get up and pretend. He'll say, what? Didn't I already warn you? And now she's usher. That's only because we don't require proper documentation of that kina. Says the Gemara. Well, according to... Rebelez's version in our Mishnah, it's not much better. Fine, the Kinu needs to have Eidim, but the Stiro can be done personally. So once again, he can make up a story that she went with Stira. But according to the version in our Mishnah, it's uh, more reasonable. You have the same concern. It can very well happen that she did not go into hiding with that person, and he'll claim that she did if we don't need Adam for that. So basically, why is this an argument against Rav Leza and the Bryce? The same argument can be presented, the same concern can be suggested according to Rav Leza and the Mishnah. If Stira does not require Adam, then he can make up stories. Amar Rav Yitzhak Yesef Arab You know what the Bryce means? Af! Ludivir Rabbi Yesi Rabbi Yehuda of course, 100%. The same concern applies in the Mishnah, uh, just as the Brisa. And all he meant was, Af, Divrei, Abrei, that uh, even, even according to Rabbi uh, according to his version of the Halacha, according to his uh, presentation of Rabbi Leza Shita, there is that same concern as the Mishnah of Eilu Davar Saif, because one of the two uh, you know, processes don't need the actual testimony of witnesses. So you can just make it up. Ask the Gemara. But still, what's the word af all about? Even. Af. When you say af, what you're saying is, certainly, in our Mishnah we have this concern. And even in Rabbi Yudah's version, we have the concern as well. It doesn't go that way. It goes the other way. Under Rabbi, just the opposite. If anything... There is more concern in Rabbi Yisri Yehuda's version of Rabbi Lazar Shita than in the Mishnah's version. You know why? Ad Rabbi, the Mishnah say no. According to our Mishnah's version, a kinoi needs to aid. It's just a stira that doesn't need to aid. Ika ikar. There is firm basis. You got the process starting. You know for a fact that there was a kinoi. You have to aid him. So there's less reason to believe. If anything, there's less suspicion that he's just making up a story. When ultimately he comes and says there was a stira. 
Hasam leke ikar. If anything over there, meaning, according to Rabbi Yisus' version of Rabbi Lazar, which is that you don't need any verification of the kinoi. There's no ikar. There's no real basis for this whole story. Meaning, as we explained before, perhaps he just noticed his wife interacting with somebody, going to say sir, and suddenly he gets up and says, "Yo, by the way, I was makana her. I warned her against this." And now she's at stage two of the process. She's usher. Like a ikr, there's really firm reason to believe the story as true. Could be he's just making it up. Ella says, the more you write, itmar, itmar. If this statement was said, it was said this way. Amar b'itzchak, bar Yosef, Amar b'yechanan, l'divri, Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, v'af, l'mishna seinu, enu d'var seif. Let's just switch it around. Once you allow any one of these stages to happen, without official confirmation, without official documentation, without real witnesses, it's a never-ending proposition. Whether it's Rabbi Yisrael's version that allows Kinoi to happen without Adam, that's really difficult. Because then uh, he can just make that up. He'll get upset, he'll decide, oh, you know, I was Makana her, and there she goes. She's Asr. And even our Mishnah's version of events. True, the Kinoi was established formally with Adam, but even that's a bit difficult because you know, then when it comes to the stira stage, he doesn't have to prove anything. He can just make it up. So that was the Chacham's response to Rabbi Lezer's shita. Rather, Rabbi Shua holds, whether it's kini, whether it's stira, the allegations need to be confirmed, documented formally, officially in front of Eid. Here comes the Chiddush. inish. Even nowadays, a person should not turn to his wife and say, Don't get involved with that man. Why? Even though there are no Adam, because maybe we hold like that shita. The Amar who says, You don't need more than yourself. By Kinu. And then let's say she goes, Let's say, sir. She'll be Asr on him. We have no Saita water to. Check her. And he's making her asr on himself forever. We learned so much about the word kinoi. Where does the word kinoi come from? The answer is It generates feelings of tension and animosity between herself and people out there. Why? Listen to this. Hamaka suffer. Rishlakish, by interpreting the word kina this way, apparently follows the shita of Rabbi Lezer and the Brisa. Kina take, can take place just between them. At this point, nobody is aware of this kina. Nobody has any clue that there was any warning. That she's been, she's been warned against socializing with people. And suddenly she's out there and keeping to herself. Keeping a distance. More than typically required. She's going overboard because she's extra vigilant. She's fearful as a result of her husband's warning. And now people are starting to notice. Well, what, what happened? Suddenly you're keeping to yourself. You're extra from. They start observing. My the kama. What, what's, what's going on over here? The kabadla. She's suddenly keeping to herself. They're going to, you know, it's going to create strife and tension. She's going to give that uh, contemplating uh, type of uh, you know expression, uh, and they're going to perceive it as as uh, you know expression of uh, eliteness and haughtiness. It's not good. So that's where Shlokish's uh, way of understanding the word kina. It's matal kina between herself and people at large. But Rav Yehimar Bar Shlam Yimshmed Abayu Omar he has a different translation. Kina means it creates strife and tension between husband and wife. Alma Kasava, because he holds Kini al Pishnaim Adam. No, Kini needs to be done formally in front of two Adam. So there's no issue in terms of the community. Everybody understands. They fully understand why she's doing this, keeping herself extra safe. Vikuli Alma Yadi, I understand, they know the Kanidla, and in fact he did Kina because the Adam will publicize the event. Rather, it's just between them that we have trouble now. The Ihu. It's just that he's going to, you know, 
generate this uh, tension, there's going to be strife and tension between them. Rashi says, because she's sort of going to tease him, annoy him. What are you suspecting? Why are you giving me a hard time? That's going to create issues in the marriage between the couple. Okay, so we have two ways to understand the word kina, and it's based, right? Interestingly enough, it's based on the halacha of how kina is done. But, says the Gemara, ultimately it appears that everybody agrees, Kino is not something we recommend. Because both, these Amaraim explain, that kino creates, uh, kino creates chaos and strife and anger and tension. Apparently it's not something we uh, want you to get into. However, says the Gemara, there's another sheet, which is really discussed in more detail in the, uh, the next stop as Hashem. But we'll just make a slight reference here. Amanda Amma Mutalakanis, but the other sheet that holds that yes, warning one's wife against inappropriate behavior is something recommended. Mutalakanis. So according to him, Maholash and Kinoi, how does he translate the word Kinoi in a positive, constructive manner? Omar of Nachmar, it's like in Kinoi El Lashna Sra, Vichenu Aimar, Ayakana Hashem La Arti, the Pasak Deus speaks about Hashem warning the locusts and the grasshoppers from continuing their. Uh, destructive uh, behavior in Eretz Yisrael. So by Yikana, he's a lesson of Hasra, of warning. He's simply warning his wife. Well in advance, look, be careful. It's not the way to, to go forward. You want to avoid issues. Please conform and behave properly. So that's the other way to learn the word, the word uh, Kinu. Okay, so in summation, the uh, Saita process involves three stages. Kinu, Stira, and ultimately the Ashka of the Mesoit and Beis Amigdash. How many Edom need to be present? We have three Shittis. When it comes to Kinoi, uh, Rabbi Lezer and Rabbi Shua on the Mishnah hold two Edom. Rabbi Lezer and the Brisa holds, don't need two Edom, even one Ed or the husband alone. When it comes to Stira, Rabbi Shua once again says two Edom. Likewise, Rabbi Lezer and the Brisa holds two Edom. Well, the Mishnah holds, one aid is enough. Of course, it's based on Pesukim, rooted in the word Ba, the aid in Ba, which is the Pasuk describing Tuma. So after Kini Vestira, we have one aid testifying about actual interaction as married. That makes her usher forever. As the Gemara worked through with the Pesukim, because the word Ve'ed means a pair of Edim, as we find in the Pasuk, L'yokim Eid Echad Be'ish. Without the word Echad, the word Eid would mean a pair of Edom. So when the Pasuk here says, Ve'ed Einba, there is no Eid, there are no two, only one. We learn it Fasa, she's us. Ba, Ve'ed Einba, it's Dafka by Tumah, but not otherwise. We have different ways of understanding where to apply this Mi'ot. Do we apply it to Kinoi, which would indicate that Kinoi needs two Edom, or do we apply it to Stira, which would indicate that Stira is the one that needs two Edom? Or does it apply to both? As Rabbi Shua's opinion, therefore Kinev Astira need to aid them each. What about the uh, the word Mekani? What does that mean? So interestingly enough, it's based on these uh, shittas. If we hold that the Kinev is done in private, then here uh, the word Kinev is a reference to tension and caste between herself and the other members of the community who she's keeping away from. If Kinyo needs to be done formally, then everybody knows about it. There's no strife between herself and the other members of the community. They understand why she's keeping a distance. Rather, the Kinyo is between him and her. This tension created by this uh, official initiation of this, of, the, of, this pro- of this process. And that's all when you work with the idea that Kinyo is something negative, something which you're not really supposed to do. Something unrecommended. In fact, our Mishnah starts with the word Hamakani. Says the Gemara because Hamakani is Loshan Bidi Eved, Asr Lakanis. Whereas the other Shita, who holds Mutar Lakanis, according to him, Hamakani is simply a reference to Hasra, warning, to keep uh, everybody in check and behaving properly. All the best to you, Surah and much, much Hatzlacha.